If you ask me to share my thoughts on Star Wars, the Marvel Universe, or any of the other standard components of nerdery, I could pin you to the wall for the next several hours. Don't tempt me. I'll do it. But what if I only have five to seven minutes? Therein lies the challenge. Successful communication requires us to be able to trim down the message to only the juiciest bits in a way that truly benefits the listener. That's where an outline comes into play. But it can't just be any old outline. It has to be structured so that it's memorable and easy to follow. An old saying suggests that we need to do three things in a speech. Tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, then tell them what you told them. Look, public speaking can seem really repetitive at first. But think about it. A speaker says something really interesting and all of a sudden I'm spacing off thinking about how that relates to my life. Squirrel. By the time I realize that I've been spacing off and I come back to listening, I've probably missed a sizable chunk of information. The trick to not sounding so repetitive lies in the basic speech recipe, which consists of an intro, three main points, and a conclusion. You probably recognize this as being the exact same structure as the classic five paragraph essay. Your intro and conclusion effectively frame the information found within the speech. Another way of thinking of it is that the intro and the conclusion are effectively the bridge that holds the goodness of a sandwich together. Okay, enough metaphors, let's take a look at the components of the intro. First of all, a good intro is really only an orientation to your topic. You don't want to include too much information up front. Include only what you need to effectively set up the rest of the speech. A good intro typically takes about a minute and a half up to two minutes tops for a shorter speech. Any longer and you're sharing too much information up front, any shorter and you might not be effectively setting up the rest of the speech. Of course there's exceptions to this, but a minute and a half has a really good starting place. The first part of the intro is called the attention getter, and like its name implies, it should grab the audience's attention right up front. There's an infinite number of ways to do this, but it should be creative and set the tone for the rest of your message. It could be an interesting quote, a startling statistic, the beginning to a compelling story, or even an action or a demonstration. Regardless of what you choose to do, make it count. Don't warm up with something lame like, hi, how's everybody doing today? <laughs> All right, how's everybody? Good, good, good. Your time is limited, so make every second count grab the audience's attention and don't let it slip. The second step of your intro is to relate your topic to the audience. Make this as specific as possible to the actual people listening to your message. How does it connect to them? This step tells an audience why they should care about your topic. After relating to the audience, the third step is to relate the topic back to yourself. Why are you talking about this topic? Perhaps you're an expert on the topic, or maybe you're just really enthusiastic about it. Either way, this step tells the audience why they should listen to you. The fourth step of the intro is to share your central idea, which is that one sentence core of your entire message. At this stage, we often hear students announce their topic, something like, I want to talk to you today about social distancing. Cool story, bro. But that doesn't tell us why the topic is important. If I added because, to the end of that sentence, I want to talk to you today about social distancing because then everything I say after that is effectively my central idea. Here's an example. Social distancing is a critical component of limiting the spread of a pandemic. There we go. That's a central idea we can work with. The last step of the intro is to preview your main points. Think of a preview as being a verbal table of contents. Your goal is to give the audience an idea of what they're about to hear as you expand and support on that central idea. Here's an example of a central idea combined with a preview of main points. Social distancing is a critical component of limiting the spread of a pandemic, and today I'd like to talk with you about the history of social distancing, best practices for doing so, and what happens when social distancing guidelines aren't followed. Sweet! Intro's done, and it's time to jump into the body of the speech. But first, we need a way to connect the intro and the body and that's where transitions come into play. A super obvious and somewhat robotic transition would be, and now for my first main point. Yeah, don't do that. Think about it. What would happen if somebody said that to you in a regular conversation? I'm guessing that would be the last conversation you'd ever have with that person. Like, ever. Transitions need to be smooth and conversational. Here's a technique to use for creating really easy, smooth, flowing, one-sentence transitions. For the first half of the sentence, sum up 
what you just said. In the last half of the sentence, give the audience a preview of where you're headed next. Here's an example. Before we talk about the consequences of not social distancing, let's take a trip back in time and explore how this began. See, it's fluid and it clearly connects two parts of the speech without getting overly wordy. All right, time to talk about that body. Of the speech! Get your minds out of the gutter. The body of the speech is where you deliver the actual substance of your message. For the purposes of the speeches you're delivering within this course, we're gonna stick to three main points. But if you're ever in a situation where you have more time to talk, you can adjust that as needed. Each main point needs a minimum of two sub points. So think about how you're going to expand each one. This is also where you're going to add in all of that wonderful research you've been collecting to not only support your points, but to also add richness and oomph. <laughs> Each main point starts out with a general statement describing that point. If you're following along using the outline provided in our course textbook, the general main points go next to the Roman numerals, and the subpoints go in under the letters following those Roman numerals. Here's an example. The history of social distancing is relatively new, believe it or not. In the 1300s, the Black Plague decimated nearly half the population of Europe in only four years, and a major cause for how that spread was how people responded to the pandemic. According to a historian from Duke University, the scared population turned to their faith and gathered together in their churches to pray, but in doing so, they exponentially spread the disease by being in close quarters with one another. And according to the CDC, it wasn't until 1918, during the flu epidemic, that the city of St. Louis started practicing social distancing guidelines and they saw a drastic cut in the rate of spread of that disease. See how that all comes together? We use a funnel approach, going from the general toward the more specific. Of course, when one main point is done and we're ready to move on to the next main point, we need another transition. So here's one more example for you. Now that you all know how social distancing was discovered, let's take a look at some of the best practices and guidelines for doing so. Transitions are super easy once you get the hang of it, right? Now I won't blab on and on through two more main points, so I'm just gonna skip ahead to the conclusion. Once the last main point is finished, we need one more transition, but this one works a little bit different, so we call this one signaling the end. The absolute worst way to do this, please don't, would be to state in conclusion. conclusion. Again, if somebody ever did this to you in a conversation, think about how you would respond. You'd probably just walk away. If you're looking for ideas on how to signal the end, look no further than some of your other classes. There's always one word or phrase that a professor or a teacher says that goes off like a starting pistol and all of a sudden everybody's racing to open up their backpacks and put their stuff away. Sometimes it's as you leave here today, or if there's one thing I want you to take away from all this. Personally, I like to encourage bad puns and horrible dad jokes at this point, as long as humor is appropriate for your topic, of course. For example, with respect respect to our social distancing topic, I could say something like, before I post this speech video and it goes viral, Whatever you choose to say, make sure that it's a clear signal to the audience that you're coming to an end and you're wrapping it all up. A reminder, from here on out, absolutely no new information. After signaling the end, you want to reiterate your central idea and recap the highlights of your main points. Wait. This sounds familiar. Didn't we already do this? Yes! Yes, we did! Back in the introduction! And now, we're doing it again. Remember way back at the beginning of this video when I said, Look, public speaking can seem really repetitive at first. Of course you do, because we're all such great listeners, right? Wrong! Reiterating this one more time helps the audience remember the highlights of your message. So after repeating the central idea and recapping your main points, the very last thing you say is like the opposite of the attention getter, and we call it the clincher. The clincher wraps everything up nice and tidy into a little pink bow. Again, get creative and make it memorable. Here's an example. So if the CDC ever shuts down all our favorite bars and restaurants again and tells us to stay home, remember, we're not being punished or imprisoned. It's science and it's there to help protect us all. A great clincher isn't followed by saying thank you to the audience. Weak clinchers often result in awkward silence. And to break that silence and let the audience know we have nothing else to say, the first thing that comes out of our mouths is usually, thank you. That's a lot like seeing the end at the conclusion of a great novel. Look, I haven't seen the end at the back of a book since I was reading to my kids to put them to sleep. Good clinchers speak for themselves. They're powerful, 
memorable, and they cement the message into your audience's minds. Writing them is only the first part though. Learning how to deliver that powerfully is another story, and that's gonna be the topic of our next video.